And welcome back to Janky AF and Year of the Aerostar, episode number 120. Well, I got a great email the other day, um, and uh, this person, Luan, shout out to you, Janky do thank you for sending me this email, and uh, they said they had recently purchased an Aerostar, said some very kind words about your friend Beef Janky here. And uh, I took a look, found the listing, and, and we're going to talk about it today. So uh, we'll, I guess we'll just introduce the vehicle. Okay, here we have a 1996 Ford Aerostar Passenger XLT minivan. Sold for $1,800, although I, I think there was perhaps a little bit of shrewd negotiation because I won't tell the exact price, but slightly lower than the listed price. In Chattanooga, Tennessee, I went to a wedding one time in Chattanooga. I had a very nice time, and I would like to go back sometime. So uh, maybe if I do, I'll look up Luan, and maybe he'll let me drive his Aerostar. Okay, about this vehicle, 179,500 miles, automatic transmission, exterior color white, interior color blue. That will be a very important discussion topic later on. Fuel type, gasoline, 15 MPG city, 21 highway for a combined 17 MPGs. Seller's description. This is a one owner vehicle. My father bought it new in 1996. This is obviously low mileage for an almost 30 year old vehicle. It has been well maintained. It has relatively new brakes, shocks, steering rack, and alternator. I know from experience with my Ford Transit Connect that a steering rack is not cheap. There is a airbag light flashing on the dash, but it has been like that for over three years and doesn't affect the drivability. I can also say that my 1993 Ford Aerostar Sport has a blinking airbag light too, although mine chimes, and apparently the ones does not chime, uh, mine chimes as five chimes, five times. Uh, and if anyone knows what that means, please uh, feel free to uh, list it in the comments. I have some module or something I haven't got around to trying to address. But again, uh, it doesn't affect the drivability, as the listing says. My dad is lo no longer driving, and I am selling this for him. I will not trade for anything. Very good listing, very straightforward. Uh, you know, fantastic grammar and punctuation for your average uh, compared to your average Facebook Marketplace listing. And again, grammar and punctuation and spelling. Even I don't, I don't, um, you know, judge those things because I think I always say, you know, the 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 measure, the way you measure uh, proper communication is how well it communicates. So. You know, if you have one run on run on sentence and you get the point across, then that's okay. But I, but you know, sometimes it's nice to see a. Uh, anytime there's you know punctuation and capitalization and spelling, it usually it indicates that the person just took a little bit more time in composing what they wanted to say, and that usually is an indicator of how the the time and attention to detail that they took or in this case, their relative took in maintaining the vehicle. So I always think that's like sort of a, a good little indication. You know, you want to. Um, put your best self out there when you're selling a vehicle as well as when you're buying one because you know you want to describe things accurately and 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 give give the potential buyer an accurate picture of what exactly you have for sale so great listing you know as I told Luan, a one owner vehicle is is one of the best types of used vehicles. My 2015 Toyota Prius V was a one owner vehicle. It was dealer maintained. And even though it had 137,000 miles when I bought it, um, it now has close to 175,000. I've had absolutely zero issues with it. So deferred maintenance, obviously a problem. And for a vehicle this old, to have something that was meticulously maintained is such a rare thing. I bought my 93 Sport for $1,500. And the owner of it was great. He did a bunch of work to it himself, but it was far from, it wasn't a one owner vehicle and it has rust spots and a lot of stuff that, even though mine was slightly cheaper than this one, it has less mileage. I'm gonna put a lot, I already put, put a new alternator in it, which this is already done. So right there with the labor and the part, that was over $400. So I'm already, you know, my, the deal I got on my vehicle and I had to go to, well, I bought it in Ohio. So that was, <laughs> I had to pay someone to drive it to Buffalo and yada, yada, yada. You know the story if you've watched the videos. So a screaming deal is what I'm trying to get across here. Like, you know, for, for this vehicle, that's turnkey. Um, you know, we talk about the used car prices and car prices in general. The average car price right now, I believe is something like $48,000. So 
and, and, and you're still gonna have to put maintenance into that vehicle. So for to buy a car for less than $2,000 that's had maintenance done to it and is running and driving is such an exceptional deal. And Aerostars still are some of the cheapest vehicles for basic transportation that you can buy. I mean, it, 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 the, the market on these things is just, it's, it's bottomed out probably in the year, you know, 2000 and it hasn't, it hasn't come up since like it's crazy how cheap these things are and i always tell people and i preach the gospel and obviously if you're watching this you probably have some sort of uh you know reverence for this vehicle so i'm preaching to the choir but i i just couldn't get over the condition of this vehicle i mean now unfortunately here you'll see my screen grab i don't know why but when i get a link to a listing sometimes this this little left menu i can't get it go away and i don't want to tinker with it because i think the listing is no longer there and this is like just a window i've kept up for three days because i really wanted to shoot this video and didn't have time and unfortunately that means that these little arrows here get in the way so a little inside baseball here so when i make my you know youtube thumbnail it's a shame that these arrows are here but anyways neither here nor there i mean you can just see the paint glistening off this vehicle. I mean, it's just incredible what good condition this vehicle is in. And let's let's go through here. Now, it's also in the color of white, which is a cool Aerostar color, but usually when you see a white Aerostar, it's a cargo version. So to see white in a passenger version Aerostar is really cool because, um, you know, my uncle has a C8 Corvette, uh, which I was lucky enough to drive. You can watch that video. And he only buys cars in white now because kind of paradoxically, they are much easier to keep clean than a darker colored vehicle, just with the mud and the, the it's more like the fine dust that comes up from the road in the atmosphere, just um, really shows on dark colors. I mean, look at how clean the windows are on this vehicle. Look at the shine and the shimmer on it. It's like they detailed the car before they listed it. And the other thing is, you know, some, this, the seller's father kept this vehicle since 1996, obviously took amazing care of it. It's got a tow hitch on it and a vehicle like this. And now cars are just objects. I know that, but a vehicle like this, you know, deserves to be bought who, by someone who's going to honor that legacy is probably the wrong word, but honor the care and, and the intent that was put into keeping this vehicle maintained because Lord knows there's not many Aerostars in this condition left. And actually, aside from the mileage on this vehicle, it's in as good or better condition than any of the Aerostars I've seen on Bring a Trailer, which there haven't been too many, but then the Aerostar that went up on cars and bids, then Aerostars that are listed for $10,000, $13,000. And some of them have a little bit more, I guess you would say, fancy. Some of them have like the, the body work on them and they're extended and they have, you know, I mean, this is a not a four wheel drive, so that's obviously a price premium. But I mean, the, the, the this Aerostar should be going for like six or $7,000, I would say, in this condition, aside from the mileage. But again, like, even if the engine blew up on this Aerostar tomorrow, you could have it replaced with a lower mile engine and, and still be probably several thousand dollars less than the next uh, least expensive, like cream puff Aerostar, so to speak. So you got one heck of a deal is what I'm trying to say. And I'm beyond jealous and envious. Now, if it were up to me, I would just buy every Aerostar that I could. And the only ones I wouldn't buy were from people who already had them and enjoyed them. So I, I you know, I, I, I'm not trying to have a dictatorial relationship with the Aerostar. However, I would buy every single one I could and I would be, you know, screaming with envy that I had not got this one. But, but because there are so many out there, luckily I don't have to do that. And I can just be, you know, proud and, and, uh, and, and filled with admiration for the deal that Luan got on this Aerostar. So uh, it's got this little nice little side stripe, this little um, you know three-dimensional piping here. Um, I, to be quite honest with you, I could take that or leave it, but I like that it's a little additional thing. I'm not sure if it's aftermarket or dealership. I think it's supposed to help with door dings maybe, but it, but it looks nice. It, it fits well within the sort of black and white because every white Aerostar is a, is a naturally a black and white Aerostar because there's so many little trim pieces, it's got the roof rack, the, even just things like tires, bumpers, front grille, mirrors, door handles, all these things are, are usually black or a dark, dark gray on an Aerostar. So you get this natural um, black, like I love a black and white tile kitchen floor. There's just something classic and wonderful about it. 
but just a tremendous looking Aerostar. The bumpers, you have one small crack here, looks like, but the bumpers are in great condition. Even your exhaust looks like it's in great condition. Um, it's too bad this bumper sticker wasn't in a little better condition because it would be nice to maybe leave it on as like an honor or tribute to the previous owner, but you know, do what, do with it whatever you want. It certainly wouldn't wouldn't look bad off there because it is already faded. I mean, the bumper sticker is held up much less well than the Aerostar itself. Okay, now the blue interior, and this is the other thing. You know, aside from the Ford badge having a blue and white color scheme, there's something about a white and blue Ford, that is a very, very iconic thing. And I think it's like a perfect spec for an Aerostar. And I've also, I have not seen that many white over blue Aerostars. So it's also a slightly on the rare side too, I would say. So when I played Gran Turismo as a youth, uh, there was a Ford GT40, and I think it was white with blue racing stripes. And that was like just such an iconic look. I mean, you think about the Shelby GT350s and GT500s, the new Ford GT, like white with blue stripes, or white and blue as a color combination on like an iconic classic Ford vehicle is a very defined thing. And I, and I think the fact that this has the white over blue color scheme, just, at, you know, take an already great thing and just blow it out of the water. You know, I like an Aerostar in any format, and but you see a lot of reds and the greens and, and you see whites, but as cargo, like I mentioned, um, so, uh, and you see a fair amount of white passengers, but usually they'll have a, uh, gray interior or gray with red piping, all good, but the white over blue, there's just something about it. Beautiful profile shot. Now it does look like, and this is the um, same thing on my brown one, if you jack the vehicle up by this point, it kind of bends this little uh, very bottom of your rocker panel. You could probably have that hammered out, but you know, it's small potatoes, you know, very nitpicky. Um, great little profile shot there. Uh, and, and as we just walk around this vehicle and look at it, I'm just more and more astounded. It looks so great. Here's your other profile shot here. The one thing I'll, I'll, I wonder if these hubcaps, these look a little bit aftermarket to me. Now, I, I, there's people that comment on these videos that are more knowledgeable than the Aerostar and I am. And if you go on the Facebook groups about the Aerostars, there's people that their mechanical knowledge of the Aerostar, I, I'm, I still don't know anything about the vehicle really in terms of the nuts and bolts and the and the, the, the mechanical elements of it other than the engines that were available and, and, and things like this but so I would ask you uh, and not to be weird and talk to you directly through the camera but I'm curious to see what Luan is going to do with these hubcaps will will um, they choose to keep them on there or uh, maybe you know, if I may, <laughs> um, I like the older steel wheels on the first uh, sort of years of the Aerostar when they would come with this little silver dog dish hubcap. And I would imagine if you put some of those on with the dog dish hubcaps, they would look fantastic, especially if you painted the wheels white to match. But again, that's me projecting my stylistic uh, preferences on there. Also, what might look great is just a set of steel wheels, a set of alloy wheels that came with the more upmarket Aerostars. I think that would look great. But if you want to leave them just as they are, hey, that's great too. They certainly look period accurate and they, and they, they kind of go with it with this sort of, you know, white always connotes like a plain Jane or like the base model or the contractor version. So I think these, you know, fairly modest hubcaps actually don't look bad on there. There's also some great hubcaps from the very early Aero Stars, there's one like that's like all it just looks like kind of like those moon hubcaps where they're just one solid piece of silver, but they have a little bit just more going on and they're a Ford uh, specific hubcap. I digress. Um, but uh, any way you slice it, it's great. I love the roof rack on it. Again, look at the paint and the glass just shimmering in this video. I mean, I, I know, you know, Tennessee is a pretty good place to buy a vehicle generally because there's much less rust. Um, but I'm, but uh, even like your window seals and stuff like that look pretty fresh. Um, and as we go inside, it just it just keeps getting better. Look at how clean this interior is. We'll see this better in another photo. But look at you know these these rubber plastic panels up here are notorious for warping and bending and cracking and disfiguring. And these are all so perfectly pinched up and tight to your headliner. I mean stuff like that too, like. You can't just go find a complete blue interior for an Aerostar. These things are not like easily replaceable. So if you really wanted like a mint condition cream puff Aerostar and you bought one that was not, it's very hard to get it to that condition. And 
again, to find something in this condition, especially the interior, for this price is just simple. It's outstanding. So uh, again, the blue steering wheel and the blue dashboard, uh, the blue cup. That's the, the cool thing about vehicles from this era is when they chose an interior color, I guess these a lot of these plastic panels and stuff were just molded pieces so they could make them any color they want. So it's like, boom, they hit you with everything. It's not like, oh, you have blue seats. It's like the entire, any plastic or carpet surface is blue. And it's, it's monochromatic in a way, aside from obviously your dash pieces. And monochromatic is very trendy right now. So uh, I like that a lot. Again, interior, you can see just how much room there is in an Aerostar. I was just having a conversation with someone the other day about all these big SUVs and a lot of these even like large third row SUVs, they don't have that much room in them. The, t the tailgates all swoop down at the bottom so you can't fit like large square objects in them. Like I think you could fit more in this vehicle than you probably could in like a brand new Chevy Suburban or anyways, it'd be close. You have a fairly low... Um, I think the Aerostar was one of the best in class in terms of how low your floor is to load stuff in, and you even have this great little uh, step up too, which is incredibly ergonomic, ergonomic and beautiful. Uh, and I like this is this <laughs> this is amazing. They took pictures of this vehicle with with and without the seats. Now, whether that was a conscious decision to sh just show you how much room it had in it, or they just happened to be out and then they decided to put the seats back in before they sold it. Um, but either way, you get you get to view it with and without the seats in it. And then when I first saw it, I was like, oh, it doesn't have the back seats. But no, 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 it has a full second and third row bench seat. Look at this headliner. I mean, look at the, it's perfect. I mean, it's flawless. It's tight. You can see all the grooves and everything. Like, I, I don't know if, like, I, this is so rare to see. Like, Aerostar, especially now, you know, they were, they were, you, they, they were used for, anything and everything and and while they were being used not a lot of people took the care to really see them as future classic vehicles and consequently they just got beat up you know they got torn apart and and to find one in this good condition again this blue interior just looks stunning and it is these two-tone seats so it's like you have your not only i always say this not only two-tone in color but two-tone in fabric this like more heathery material and then you're like sort of light gray or maybe it's like a a powder blue gray piping tying it all together. Even look at your seat backs. You have the contrast and dark and light blue there. It even looks like you have these extra mats here. Now, maybe these came standard, but most of these vehicles don't have these anymore. With this little, it's got a vinyl or leather stitched, um, you know, border trim going around it. I feel like cars just don't do this thing, especially cars, you know, uh, like of this caliber. Everything is, is, is basic and very Spartan, yet at the same time, done very nicely. So it has these little stylistic touches on it that just are, are so special to me. And obviously, now I've seen people do this where they take two third row seats and stack them one after the other so you can actually fit eight people in an Aerostar. And then it's like really, you know, off the charts in terms of like just uh, the size of the vehicle compared to how many people it can uh, fit in it but I, but I, I do say this makes more sense just because it's a little bit easier to get into the third row but uh, beautifully preserved seats I mean maybe there's a tiny bit of um, you know misshapenness to that carpet there and the driver's seat looked like it maybe had a tiny bit of wear on it the carpets you know a tiny bit of wear on them but again for a 30 year old vehicle I always have to count on my hands 2006 2016 2026 so a 28 year old vehicle that you know was used i mean it has a hundred almost one hundred eighty thousand miles on it. that's the thing like yes it's higher mileage and i get that's why the price is lower but also like to preserve a vehicle this well and not have only twenty thousand miles on it you know to preserve a vehicle this well and take it one hundred eighty thousand miles you just, you must be like you know so dedicated to cleaning up after something happens and keeping it neat and keeping it clean it's just, it's just outstanding. It's, it's, it's triumphant. So I love the seats. I love the blue interior, just blue carpeting, blue headliner, blue seat belt latches, blue plastic molding, you know, <laughs> this is everything. It's so great. It's incredible. Um, so janky do thank you, Luan, for sending me this. It's very nice correspondence we had. If I'm ever in Chattanooga, uh, maybe I'll get a hold of you and see if you'll let me drive this thing, do a review on it. 
And congratulations, I mean, most of all. Like, uh, and thank you for bringing it to my attention because this was sold. I never would have seen this listing. And you know, th the crazy thing is I can't keep up. Like there, I missed out on some good Aero Stars because I just didn't have time to record all these episodes and, and they keep coming up. I just found an extended version while I'm in this different sort of search radius with an all red interior. And we all know I love the all, speaking of interesting, interesting interiors, I found another one with an all red interior and I am, that is, that will be like one of the piece de resistances of my Aerostar collection one day is a red interior Aerostar. I'm so smitten by them because it's even more striking than the blue in, in a way. And it's red on red, which seems like a lot of them were red on red, which is interesting. But hopefully I'll get an episode on that one. That one's also dirt cheap too. You know, <laughs> if, I, if I were a rich man, I could... It wouldn't, I wouldn't even be, it wouldn't even be irresponsible to buy all these Aero Stars because I could buy a hundred Aero Stars and, and for the, for the price of, you know, one used McLaren, you know, and, uh, but, uh, you know, one day we'll get there and, um, the collection will grow, but, uh, you know, kid in a candy shop. So there you have it. I don't know where this is parked. It looks like in front of an old department store, which is funny because it actually has the same little like, bluish gray two-tone color scheme as the Aero Star, as if it wasn't perfect enough. Um, you know, this back in the day when these malls were full of stores and people, this Aerostar was probably so many of them parked in that parking lot. But this one survived and not only survived, but thrived. And uh, I'm just so, so, so smitten with it. I do love that it's got power windows and locks too, which I've never, I, both my Aerostars have manual windows. One day I'd like one with the power uh, windows and locks. You get that big honking dome light up there. Even your, your sun sun blockers are blue all your plastic interior molding and they even took this little heather material from the seats and put it into the little insert here which i thought was like a really nice touch too i mean the more you look at this vehicle the just 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 look at the interior door panel i mean if you're a fan of like art and design like all the proportions all the angles the slight you know just like uh diagonal angle of that panel that your controls sit on the little concave here to allow your hand to go into the door to pull the latch, which is hidden. It's a very interesting door unlatching system on the Aerostar. Everything about, you know, they, they really took their time when they designed this vehicle. And is it a perfect vehicle? No. Um, every vehicle has its flaws. It doesn't get great gas mileage, first of all, but, and it, it's not an incredibly heavy vehicle, but I digress. It, it, it's just, there's so many cool little touches. Um, I see. Yeah. Okay. So the driver's seat's not perfect, but what are you going to do? I mean, it's <laughs> just incredible, incredible vehicle. You don't want it to be too nice because now you can actually drive it and use it. You know, it's not, you don't feel guilty about it. It's not like some museum piece. These vehicles were meant to be used and driven and I have confidence that it will in the future. So that's great. There you go. Glad I got to get this episode in. Janky, do thank you again. Uh, Luan for sending me this. I, I, I asked you how to pronounce your name and yet I still hope I'm pronouncing it correctly because I've said it like a thousand times. Um, maybe it's Luan or Luan. I don't know. Anywho, I, I, forgive my ignorance as I said in my email. But Janky do thank you so much for sending this in. And, uh, you know, way back in the day, I had a lot of people email me sending me pictures of their Aero Stars. And so I should take this opportunity to apologize because I always want to do something called like Aero Mail, like a segment. And sadly for Beef Janky, you know, my aspirations uh, in terms of the Aerostar and Janky AF are always limited by reality. But in a perfect world, I would just be just nonstop making all this stuff. But we have other things in our life that we have to tend to. And uh, so, so I feel bad if someone else has sent something in and I haven't done a full-blown video like this on it. I would like to one day recap like a bunch of Aero Mail and um, show everyone's Aero Stars off. But that being said, if you have purchased an Aero Star, especially if there's a listing of it still up, uh, I would you know be honored to to do a little video of it for you. So I'm so uh, appreciative and thankful to this wonderful Aerostar community. I have people to email. I have so, I, every, the last probably five videos, I'm apologizing for not responding to comments. I think I may actually have time this evening to sit down and do that because I try to respond to everyone. Uh, but this was certainly a pleasure to document this gorgeous, handsome, dashing. The handsome, dashing Ford Aerostar for 1996 Ford Aerostar Passenger XLT minivan in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, the Chattanooga Choo Choo, as it were. So, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Uh, this has been Year of the Aerostar here on Janky AF. We'll have another one for you very soon. We'll also have another uh, My Janky Life coming up. And until then, 
Janky do thanky. One small step for man, one 